know, a comfy chair is comfy. Wow. I've noticed some insane, like, fingerprint marks on the inside of my computer case, so I gotta give a good wipe down on that. Tempered glass, what do you do with it? It's just... It's so nasty. It's, well, I, it's great. It's, it's lovely and smooth, and I prefer it to plastic just because the plastic just... It blocks too much light and then starts to filter too much in front of it. But then on the flip side, it's like, well, tempered glass. The glass is heavy. It can shatter. That's about it, really, actually. It's not too bad. Anyways, hello, everybody. My name is BNO, and welcome to the BNO stream for this Monday, the Monday, the 6th of September, 2021. If you live in the US, the date you, you'll write as 9 slash 6, but in Australia, Europe, Pretty much everywhere else in the world, it is 6 slash 9 today, and that is a funny date, for some reason. It's a fun date, I like it. Uh, today, on the agenda of the game stream, is yet again... Let's just jump right into it, lady and gentlemen. The agenda today is... Grinding a little bit more, because I don't think my team is a perfect level for the, for the, the league. Actually, at all. Uh, thank you for the follow! Yeah, no, I, I just looked at my team and I was like, 36? That still feels really low. Um, as a mild, uh, I guess, like, comparison metric, uh, I don't know if this is actually something to compare with, but I, um, I saw that there's the, the retro arc achievements for this game, and I haven't really actually gone through what they are. I've been technically quietly accumulating them as I've played, but... I haven't actually been, well, had the notifications on the screen, so you wouldn't know that I've been getting them. Uh, these retro arc, uh, retro achievements, uh, usually, uh, and, and for those people who don't know, uh, playing certain video games on specifically retro, or well, retro achievements enabled emulators, uh, as I am doing at the very moment, uh, there is a wonderful site called retroachievements.org. Lots of really talented people, and basically they write, uh, little scripts that will memory watch the game in the emulator, and then basically detect that you have triggered achievements in them. So, if they're designed well, they will work as if that's an actual achievement system, and that's really cool, because then you can provide some, you know, some custom challenges as well as just, you know, uh, things that you would maybe expect in a more modern achievement system. Anyways, uh, that is good fun. Uh, I have been getting them as I've gone along. Most of them are, so far have been, you know, the things that you'd expect. Getting the badges, uh, defeating Team Rocket at the Radio Tower, uh, defeating Team Rocket at the Slowpoke Well. Um, some of them are a little bit more, uh, not obscure, but definitely, uh, you know, not as easy to... to... easy? But they're not things you may not uh, necessarily get, like a trade. Uh, the one... I've gotten two that are a little interesting so far. One, they've gotten, uh, find 50% of the items across, uh, Johto and Kanto, cough, cough. Uh, and another one is win against 50% of the trainers in Johto. Uh, there's bound to be quite a few others that I will get. Uh, there's also bound to be a few that I'm just not going to get. Uh, I think the inevitable one in every single Pokemon set needs to have one of these is collect as many Pokemon as you can, uh, without you know, the ability to trade with someone. So, in this game, that's 199. You're able to get 199 Pokemon on your Pokédex before you are able, well, without needing the ability to trade with someone. Uh, but one of the other achievements that I thought was kind of interesting is that, uh, not only is there an achievement for beating each of the gyms, there's a secondary achievement for beating each of the gyms with, uh, in set mode with your team below, and from the looks of it, below the lowest level, or sorry, below the highest level Pokemon that the gym leader has, uh, which I've basically been, I mean, I haven't been in set mode, but I've been, like, so far under, like, I fought Claire with maybe level 31 as my highest, I think. Did I? Oh, maybe I did have Growlithe, and I used the rare candies on Growlithe. Still, 
No, I, d no, I didn't use the red candies before then. So it must have been really low level. Um, so I guess if I switched into set mode, I would have had that. Uh, set mode, for those who don't know, is uh, every time uh, a Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon dies, uh, you get the ability to say, hey, I want to switch to another Pokemon. Set mode, disable set prompt. And that means that you don't have the ability to gain that extra free turn switching to another Pokemon. Uh, it does mean the game is a bit harder. I don't think it makes the game that much harder, but it's definitely, you know, something to note. Uh, I think in general, like, none of those achievements seem really that hard. Because um, none of them are, I mean, first of all, none of them are time-based. Finding items is going to be a bit of a painful one, I'll definitely say that, and like, winning against every single trainer in, you know, in the game. If you miss one, unfortunately, like, that's going to be a bit of an oof. Um, there's also one, uh, beat the, basically the, the end game super boss with one singular Pokemon in your party. Now, with a level 100, it could probably happen. It could probably happen, especially with a legendary. Because by that point in the game, you've actually got a good choice of legendaries that you can use. Um, so having a legendary that's up to level 100, easy source. Uh, it's also one that's not missable, like you can have a couple of goes at it. Actually, do you need any HMs to even get to them at that point? Maybe. So, um... Yeah, it's not really, like, the, the achievement set doesn't look like that rough, if you actually want to get 100%. Besides catching all the Pokémon, and that's that's probably going to be the, the bit of the, the hitch, is just having the willpower to try and catch all, all of the legendaries and then all the other Pokémon. Um, 199 does take its time. Uh, but no, it, it's, it's good stuff. I think it's also a different achievement set for Silver. Yeah. So Silver has a slightly different achievement set as well, so who knows. It kind of looks like it's the same goals, but it is technically a different set. And so does Crystal. Who knows. Got a little Earth Ring here. Uh, but no, I... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do really, like, I, I think Retro Achievements is one of, you know one of these great, like, fan... Ran fan run communities, just because, like, hey, here are talented people who are willing to spend the time to... maybe not, you know, disassemble and dissect a game, but definitely be able to know, hey, like, when I do this, you know, that is a sign that I can detect an achievement. And they just continue that system until, you know... Sorry, they, they follow that line of reasoning until they've got, you know, basically an achievement set, and then... That's- oh my gosh. I'm gonna get him with the next few surfs, but it's just... <laughs> bit of a time sink, Ursaring, come on. Oh well. But yeah, no, it's- it's- it's great. Uh, in terms of legalese, uh, I guess the only thing is... By providing a service that relies on... Uh, emulated titles, you are therefore encouraging somewhat... No, I don't know, you, you, could, you can make the case that, like, it encourages the use of accessing certain pirated content. I guess it's that. Why does piracy keep ending up in these streams? I think it's Pokemon. Pokemon does that to people. I don't, I don't know, like... And the uh, Pokemon company must hate this, where, like, the, the Pokemon games are probably, I would argue, like, the Pokemon games are, like, the most pirated video game out there. Um, why? I think it's because they are insanely popular handheld titles, and handheld titles like these emulated really well really long ago. Uh, it's weird as well, because trading wasn't even, like, emulators don't really support trading. If you can do save file transferring, then... You know, that, like, if you say, oh, like, I, I worked on a save file on an emulator, and then I transferred it to my actual cartridge, and then I, uh, you know, and then happy days from there. Um, I don't know how often that use case is done, though. I feel like a lot of people who can do that would also, one, be using a custom, <laughs> a custom chip anyways, so the technically 
And, and then at that point, they're also, you know, why play it on an emulator when you can play on the actual hardware, even if you're running a illegitimate copy. So, I think that's probably what's going on there. Um, that being said, yeah, I, I guess a lot of people probably just download the illegitimate copy. Um, and I guess one, one huge advantage that I think people have is the ability to have multiple saves going on. Like, you know, every single Pokemon game, it's one save on the cartridge. One. Except for maybe Sword and Shield. I just mashed A and I used Amnesia. Nice. <laughs> Power of the defense upping. <laughs> I don't know how long No One Boy's gonna, you know, take. I was thinking of, like, getting the whole team at least up to level 40. Um, which I feel like is probably, like, fine. I, Because you can be behind on levels and you're fine because you've got all those stat boosts, you've got the type boosts as well uh, for a select number of types that I am not using. I also did not look too much into uh, the moves that I'll be teaching my team. Like, I could be winging, you know, the, the moves I get off leveling, but <laughs> what moves off leveling now? Also, everyone's fully evolved. So, it's not like anything magical is going to come up. Who knows? Who knows? But, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll focus on, on, I guess, just gaining, gaining a few more levels. I'm surprised by, like, how off-level I have ended up. Um, and not even, like, that off, off-level as in, like, I managed to get completely swept in the, you know, in that first fight, despite not having, I had like a bit of, you know, having to fight trainers and then heal afterwards, but even like fighting uh, the rival right here, right at this very spot, even fighting him, it wasn't much of a concern. He's a bit weaker than, you know, the first person in the league, but like that Zatu just like swept me. And I think that's just because like, I don't have anything that fast. And my one electric type, that probably is the one to take out that Zatu, just didn't. It got Confused Ray immediately, and then couldn't. Um, and that's going to be a bit of a risk, because they've got two Zatus that have the exact same moveset. And therefore, they both can Confuse Ray me faster than I probably can. That's going to be a, a tricky spot, to be honest. I don't know what to, <laughs> what to do necessarily from that. Uh, but... <laughs> You know, nothing, like, ultimately, I can win this by being as high level as possible. Unfortunately, I think this is probably the way to, to air quotes grind, is to have the experience share and uh, fight these levels up to level 36 Pokemon in the victory road, because there's nowhere else with stronger wild Pokemon, and there's nothing with... Uh, you know, like, trainers do give you more experience, but are there trainers that will regularly fight you? Probably not. I gotta ring you up first. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, Pokemon Company must hate piracy, but, well, I'm not doing a good job advocating otherwise, uh, do not pirate, kids. Do not pirate. Own these games legitimately. Piracy is always tough. Anyways, uh, on the subject of uh, tough, uh, I played a couple of games over the weekend. Uh, or rather, over the week. Um, I guess I've got two like off the top of my head that I can uh, talk about. The first being, uh, oh my gosh, it was a Nancy Drew and the Haunted uh, Carousel, I think. I don't. I, there's too many Nancy Drew games. There's, she's in the theme park, and there's a spooky carousel. There's a spooky carousel, and that's it. That's the setup. Um, it. It was a remarkably easy one. I, I've been playing all these Nancy Drews up to this point, and this one was one of the easier ones that I have played out of that. And I mean, I guess the Nancy Drew games aren't necessarily... He's trying to learn Takedown. Is Takedown a move that I really want to learn, or is... Because he's got Strength, and I feel like Strength... I mean, 
Over Horn Attacker. Oh. Let me see if I can... I gotta do a long search just to even, like, find this up. Dang, I've... I don't know why, I've completely forgotten how much power uh, Takedown has. 90, 85 accuracy? Oh, that's trash. Horn Attack is 65, 100 accuracy. Nah. It's, it's not worth that. Not with the 85 accuracy, that, that doesn't seem consistent enough. And with the, you know, the fact that Takedown does take some of your health away. I feel like Strength is a much safer move, the accuracy is there. Doesn't hurt you. Less pee, pee Finally on my way home from college, I see I won't miss anything important while I walk. Pretty much not for the moment, not for the time being. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of, uh, a fair bit of continuing to grind on the way. Um, I don't think it will take the whole... Well, it definitely won't take the whole stream, because I'm still gonna take another stab at the, uh, Elite Four, but... I'm getting no arm boy up in the levels. And then I'm gonna get, uh... Chicky up in the levels, and then, yeah, we'll see, but... I mean, he only needs to get up to level 40 until I hit my arbitrary cutoff point. That's one issue with me doing a stream every week. I forget maybe some of the specifics of the streams right before. Or I'm getting old and very, very forgetful. Uh, it could be, could be that as well. Um... But yeah, no, Nancy Drew and the Spooky Carousel. It definitely was an easier one. Um... I'm always, I'm still curious about, like, the Nancy Drew games, because they are, like, they're, they're not particularly, like, high quality, but they do, like, have, you know, it's a short, sweet, uh, do you remember about Ice Punch? Who am I teaching Ice Punch to? I'm teaching it to no one, boy, aren't I? To get that ice coverage. Let me see if I can actually, like, start pulling up, like, my team's moveset, just so I have it on the on the side right here. There we go. Back to the drawing board for a moment. But, yeah, I, it, it, was, it was just, I, I guess, it was a lot easier. I think the reason why it was a lot easier, it was the map felt very small. You had a, a fast travel point and basically a few rooms that you could really access. Nowhere really went that long, uh, which felt a little disappointing, I guess, compared to some of the, the previous ones. And then on top of that, like, none of the items, some of the items just didn't get used. And some of them were, like... A lot of them were really obvious, or you'd get given them very, like, late in the game. So you wouldn't have this, like, variety of, wep of weapons, of items to really toy around with the puzzles. It's like, eh, you got this one and it pushes this one thing down, and then now you have another item and you go, oh, where do I use this item? Um, it's got a cool puzzle involving, uh, um, like, uh, what's the, what's the term? Like, phonetic scripture writing? I forgot what that was. Um, but it's like, hey, that's a neat puzzle. Uh, if it wasn't for the... <laughs> for the fact that, um... Like, they kind of give away the end answer pretty soon. Like, they didn't give the exact thing that you were trying to guess. But they gave a word that was so similar, like, before, that it's like, oh, okay, I see this, and I go, oh, it's almost the same, you know, almost the same puzzle. Which was a little disappointing, but sure. Uh... The other thing as well, it was a bit easy to spot the bad guy. Like, I, I like these uh, these surprise bad guys, and this one was one that was like you could you could see this guy coming a mile away. They tried to you know sow some doubt by having some of these other characters have you know something wrong with them, and then it's like yeah nah like it was the guy right from the very beginning who seemed obviously the guy who had something to hide, and something to, to gain. So... No, oh, boy, it's not having a good time fighting this gold battle all of a sudden. Maybe it's because I'm not exactly looking at I'm looking at movesets. Uh, 
There we go. All right. Uh, so where do I get Ice Punch from? First of all, let's go Quagsire. So you can learn Ice Punch TM33. You can get that from the Golden Rod Department Store for 3,000 bucks. So that's actually, yeah, I can go and purchase that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I probably should give it. I, I've got Slam as well. I'm still on the fence about Slam. Actually, hold on. Wait, is there any reason to be using Slam over Strength? No. It's got 80 power, it's got 75 accuracy. Which is, yeah, uh, that's abysmal for a move. And it's got no secondary effect. I thought Slam did more power than that. I was thinking it was closer to, like, takedown levels. But no, it's, it's unchanged. It's always been 80 power, 75 accuracy. That's bizarre. I, I gotta teach him Strength over it. Or, alternatively, I find a another normal type attack when you're poor even in Pokemon. Do <laughs> yeah. Um Quagsire's also got Earthquake, so he does have that as a, a follow-up. Um I don't particularly think I need to teach him another Um What's his other move? Amnesia. He need he needs Surf. Surf's just too good. Um I could probably teach him Ice Punch over Um Slam. Yeah, I'll, I'll commit to that. I'll commit to that right now. Just for you. Do I have Ice Punch on me as well? Probably not, because I've got to buy that 33, right? Yeah, nah. Not on me, but... Uh, actually, write it down, and we'll, 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 we'll have a list of the moves that I'm going to want. Uh, but I'm probably going to say, yeah, let's commit with Quagsire having Ice Punch... Earthquake, Water, uh, sorry, Surf, and Amnesia. Maybe a different move for, um, for, uh, instead of Amnesia. Just because I feel like the setup for Amnesia is alright, but, uh, can I commit? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, like, there's enough time to really commit to that. Who knows? But, I'll consider some of my other Pokemon. So, Meganium, uh... I think has Body Slam now. Did I teach Body Slam? I think I did, yeah. Um, and Razor Leaf, which is always a good move, and Poison Powder, and I think I've still got Reflect. I think I got rid of Synthesis. So, there's that. Um, I think Solar Beam is available as a TM. That's on... No, it's not. No. Or I've got in my inventory. I, I don't know, I haven't been looking. <laughs> I haven't been paying attention. It turns, uh, the leaves turn yellow, leaf fall coming soon. Uh, oh, yeah, dude, yeah, it's, it's autumn in most of the world, and not here in, in Australia. We've got the leaves coming back. Um, it feels good to get out of the, the cold weather. I don't have, don't have solar beam as a TM, darn. I don't really know what other move to teach Chicky, apart from, uh, committing with, uh, Toxic. But even then, I kind of want, uh, Crobat to have, like, Toxic. Who knows? Uh... Yeah... I could teach Protect, but again, I don't know if I can get Protect. None of these moves, I don't know. They don't scream out to me. Um... So, Growlithe, Growlithe could get Flamethrower eventually by level 50, but for now, gonna have to stick with Flame Wheel and nothing out of that. Uh, we had desert weather in the summer. Oh, jeez. Like, no rain? We didn't, actually, I didn't have much rain, um, in my place. Uh, had a little bit over the weekend, but it's been rather dry where I'm at. Um, maybe it's raining through the night, and uh, I just, like, don't notice it. Probably a bit of that. Maybe that misty rain, you know. Uh, so yeah, Growlithe can learn... Growlithe can learn Dragon Beth. Which is the move... The dragon type attack I do have. I wonder if that would actually be a good meme. It's not... It's not that strong, though. It's only 60 power. Growlithe does not learn many, like, attacks. 
Uh, 30, 40 with no rain hole sign. Ah, you know, once it starts getting into, like, the, the high 30s. Like, I think, like, 35 is when you start going into, like... Okay, like, <laughs> chill. If it's 35 for, like, two days, that's rather... That's really hot, but, like, that's something I can bear with. Whole summer? I, I can't deal with temperature that hot. Me and my temperate East Coast Australian... You know, stuff. All, all these fellas in, like, Penrith, like, further in, are just like, Oh, bro, like... 45 degrees? Chump change. Because they did, they did legitimately get like a 47 degree day like sometime uh, last year actually. Or no, beginning of this year. Like insanely hot day. Crazy temperature down there. And then meanwhile like over near me. Like I think it did actually pass 40 one day over here. No, I've got no idea how like... I mean one, how this temperature goes but also... Yeah. Uh, I could teach Growlithe Iron Tail. But I'm also looking through my move list going, well, Ampharos can learn Iron Tail. We want to cry me out, open your heart from Smoke Adventure Suck Point. Yeah, true. Uh, good old Sonic Adventure. Good old Sonic Adventure. But yeah, you know, all, all that, like, bizarre flash flooding. New York's getting some flooding as well, aren't they? That's some bizarre footage, just seeing, like, people filming New York train tunnels or train stations and just, like, all this water pouring down, like... Where on earth did that come from? Who knows? Uh... Yeah, I'm not really too sure what's a th uh, teach champ for us. Um... They're inevitably gonna get thunder at a much later level, I think probably even too late. Um... I don't think they're really going to learn any other useful attacks, but I'm thinking like a bit of a bit of a buffer kind of attack. Um, they got nothing beyond Iron Tail, really. Fire Punch. I could teach him Fire Punch. It's just like, oh, here's a meme, but I'm not really too sure who I cover with a Fire type attack. If it was an Ice type attack, if I had like uh, hit. Um, Hidden power and then it taught like an ice type. Like that that's a saving grace right there. Any any electric type that can just like also just learn an ice type attack is great. Could do hyper beam, but I don't know. I feel like something that does play towards the special characteristic. We got Rhyhorn. Still on the fence about that. Heracross uh is gonna stick with this move set. Um yeah, horn, horn attack, I can definitely switch out for another attack. Maybe Earthquake, because that is a bit of a meme one, is that, like, Heracross is not particularly good when you use uh, flying. Earthquake is not really the move to deal with that, but... But, uh, what else can he learn? Like, apart from... Like... <laughs> nothing really else that would deal damage apart from Earthquake. Maybe Return? Return would be pretty good. To, like, go over strength. Um. But, again, yeah, I can't get Return. Ugh. <laughs> I keep looking at these moves and then just going, like, oh, it's, it's because of, like, some bizarre limitation because I'm only showing the things that I can stream, which have to be on Mondays. So, <laughs> that gets me there. Yeah, like, I legit, I don't think I've got really any options for him. And then Crobat, Crobat's got at least, like, one option. And that's, that's to have Steel Wing. He's the only person who can learn Steel Wing on my team, and that's probably a good saving grace. But then I look at, where do you get Steel Wing? And it's... In the, uh, wonderful late-game Rock Tunnel, or... Route 28, which is just not available. So, at least for now, that's that's not really accessible. There's so many other moves. I just like I can't I can't get them right now. That's crazy. Oh well. And yeah, of course, all those breeding moves as well. 
Um, which, in the case of... I did not pay attention. Okay, what well, earthquake it is. <laughs> Uh, if someone from the street gonna hear what I'm listening right now, or they're gonna hear random English man and Quagsire genocide sound? Dude, Quagsire! Quagsire is out here destroying all these rocks. You know, I'm starting to think 306 experience is not particularly much, considering that most of these Pokémon, their experience curves max out at 1 million. 306 is like, well, you gotta fight off the top of my head, like... 3,000 Pokemon at that level in order to max level off that. I'm only going to level 40, so it's not going to be as bad, but it's still, like, a considerable number of Pokemon i got to fight. I'm probably going to commit to the Ice Punch, though. That'll definitely be something. I think having that Ice type is bound to be useful. But yeah, I look at these other... Pokemon, and I go, there's nothing really that, like, you know, diversifies any of their movesets, which is a little surprising. Um, a lot of them can learn Iron Tail. That's, that is one thing. Quagsire actually has probably one of the most diverse movesets out of everyone in this game as well. That's, that's surprising. Hello, Ampharos, how's it going? Uh, look at his face, he's like Willem from Five Nights at Freddy's. He's like me after I wake up and, you know, go to the bathroom and feel like I've taken a wonderful, wonderful load off my, my body. You can capture a Mareep? I can capture a Mareep, yes. I, I've already gotten a Mareep, I've got... Ampharos sitting in my team. Uh, that is Buffer. There he is. So, uh, the, the current, uh, goal of the now is just to train up all my team up to level 40. Um, that's such that I have a mild better fighting chance than last week on, uh, fighting the Elite Four, because I'm right outside the Elite Four. Um... Yeah, what happened last time is that I had my team of maybe up to level 34, and I just went in and I immediately got swept by that very first Sartu. And I was not I was not uh, expecting to get absolutely swept. Aeropross is hogging this, um, this experience share in the back as well. Like, he's not, um... He's still, what, at level 36? That's, that is surprising. Uh... Yeah, can I get Solar Beam? Nope. <laughs> I can... I know I can learn Solar Beam eventually, so if I'm patient, I'll get it. Uh, Capital Sigma? Capital Sigma, got it. Thanks, Wop. I love, like, the... <laughs> I didn't say what is. I I know what a sigma is. Gosh. <laughs> uh I I love I love the um you know just the the recent trend of like not recent. I guess it's been like a year and a bit old now. But like, you know, <laughs> Get, getting someone to say like what is blah and then and then you go you know blah balls that's uh it's a classic but i i love how many like variety of words there are i think there's like the you know list of all ligma words or something yeah okay okay look up awesome ligma that's someone on on github i know right Awesome Ligma, extensive list of Ligma jokes attempted to sort by most to least usable and usual conversation by category for educational purposes over, uh, sorry, only refer to this list to check if you're being Ligmid. And, uh, they got the, <laughs> they got the classic ones at the beginning, uh, when they got, you know, Updog, Zamata, and Puma. And then, of course, all the ones afterwards, uh, Particularly, uh, yeah, any, anything that ends in ma, anything that ends in d's. Fuck. 
Fitness is a good one. Dragon is a good one. Alpaca, that one's also pretty good. But nah, there's, there's wonderful times when everyone on the internet gets along with the same jokes, and, uh, <laughs> like, Ligma Sigma, like, that, that kind of stuff is, like, you know, classic. Parts course already, how'd that happen? It's amazing. Uh so the other game of the of the week that was that I played was uh I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, a classic mid-1990s, actually I think it was like 95, uh, point and click adventure game. Uh it's pretty alright. It succeeds in being a wonderful relic of its time, and, like, it, if there's one thing it succeeds so strong at, it's giving that unsettling, like, you know, atmosphere. I think the fact that the game takes place inside this corrupt AI mind, and then the game is, well, like, it's, it's only voice actor at the beginning, or at least, I don't know, the, the Steam version is, and it's got, um... You know, all this wonderful, like, MIDI sound effects and, like, just, like, sprite-based, kind of weird-looking... Everything's very, very strange-looking. Um, but it's, it's like, it's a great kind of tone to soak up. Like, you do something kind of, like, you know, very disturbing, like you'd stab someone, and then the game, you have to grind... Uh, you grind have more colors than my whole entire walk to home. My grind have more colors? Yeah, I guess, yeah. We got the body slam, get him on it. It's probably gonna take a bit longer than the surf, but I got there. Maybe I should do the daycare strat as well. Not strat, but you know what I mean? Like just go into daycare, just zoom the bike. Make sure they don't breathe. <laughs> Maybe I should do that, just set that up. Because I don't think anyone's going to accidentally learn moves while I'm, like, sitting tight, right? Growlithe certainly isn't. Ampharos won't. And Crobat, yeah, Crobat won't either. So, how about I'll put... Fluffer and Hot Doggo in the daycare. Ah, oh. yeah. How about I do that? I'll put Fluffer and Hot Doggo in the daycare. Ooh. I did the same thing again. I scratched my right ear, took my headphone off, and then wondered why I couldn't hear anything. Like when? Oh no, the game's frozen on me again. Switch the party a little bit and then come back. Maybe I should have been doing this like throughout the game, just have something in the daycare. I never trust, I never trust like any moves that the daycare will teach. That's the one thing. Alright, so we'll put uh. I was gonna say we'll put um away just for the brief moment. Just so I have a free spot. And then withdraw the flash fly. And then I'll come back in a moment. But uh, here's the thing, you can go outside and fly. And you can fly all the way to nowhere. I guess that's why they probably have this guy to teleport for you. Yeah, 
picture your house. There you go. Okay, well. <laughs> I guess it can't fly across regions. I guess that's probably why they did the, um, the train later in the game. But darn, that's a little annoying, isn't it? Alright, while I'm at it, let's go buy Ice Punch. Which floor is it on? Not this one, right? Bow Collection. Wait. No, because that's the guy. Medicine Box? No, 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 it's on this floor, isn't it? Yeah, so 33, Icy Punch. Yes, just give me one of those Icy Punches. Um... I definitely know there's uh, Thunder Punch and Fire Punch, I've forgotten what these ones are. Two and eight. Alright, well, let's see you my sponge. There we go. Teach Ice Punch to... Come on, boy. He's trying to learn Ice Punch. What? Can't learn moves. Yeah. So delete, uh, slam. And if I don't like it, I'll just teach, like, strength over it or something. That's the nice thing about using a move that you can just buy, is that you can, you can keep second-guessing. So I believe the daycare is, is it one experience for every step you take? Um, as, I guess, the general, uh, like, you know, no one boy has 64,000 experience points. Uh, Plot first 29,000, so that's that's a lot of steps to take. Jeez. Well, oh, when I'm not in the spirit of this, my Voltorb's looking awesome. I wish I could show you. Oh, but I almost caught an around female. Oh, it's so cute to you. Remind me to delete all my phone numbers. There you go. Uh, they're also not going to breed on me, are they? You can't tell from the screen. <laughs> oh, not switch. Mail. Mail. We're safe. <laughs> It's gonna cost a bit of money, but that's okay. Oh, even better, they tell you there. Oh, you gotta talk to the other lady. You gotta talk to the other lady. Uh, it's a hot doggo. Yeah, okay. I guess I technically can't go back to Victory Road in, in due time. Maybe I'll just, <laughs> just run back and forth. Who knows? Maybe that's probably the best strat, it's just to uh, keep going. Well, oh, okay, let's do it. See how far we go. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was one experience for every step. Which, yeah, it sounds like a lot, but after a bit, like, you realize, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sailing around for a bit. Uh... So we go, yeah, every step, uh, Pokemon reaches level work and learn a new move. It will always learn that new move, and that's the one thing that I want to watch out. Uh... Also, I guess a fun a fun fact that I forgot about as well. If a Pokemon knows a HM move, you can't put in the daycare in Gen 1. Um, I think the reason why that's the case is because you may not be able to go to uh, Vermilion City at that point in time. Uh, but you can definitely be... Oh, I, I, I think, like, because you can give a Pokemon that knows Cut and technically, like, mildly softlock yourself. It feels very minor. I don't know. The fact that I keep running into, like, this one guy is... ...very irking me. It depletes my chakra. So, I mean, I, I see, like, this kind of route, and I go, this is, like, 20 steps. Back and forth. So if I go back and forth five times, that's 100 steps. And they needed, what, 30,000? So... 
Uh, multiply that by 300, and that's 1500 back and forths, which, granted, I can do a back and forth in four minutes. Sorry, in, in four seconds. Uh, 15 uh, a minute. You probably don't want to be watching this for 100 minutes, do you? And uh, I guess, just as also for note, uh, that was 300 experience per each of those Pokemon I was fighting. I don't know if this is actually a quicker way than fighting, or than Victory Road. It's definitely consistent, but I don't know if it's really training the Pokemon in the back or not. Maybe like as I'm doing it at the same time, but even then I don't even think it's going to be giving them much more experience. Who knows? I know that in some of the later Pokemon games, you can do, um... Uh, like, I remember in X and Y, I used to do a lot of the crap on that home, and wow, what a true DK content. Is this actually, like, what people do as the fastest way of, of leveling? I don't know. I feel like the Victory Road was faster. In the end. This is- because this is getting two Pokemon up, one experience point at a- like, per step. But I don't know, because I feel like I could fight a wild Pokemon faster than, you know, one minute. It's a toughie, I'm really not too sure. Very, very iffy. I'm gonna look impatient, and I'm gonna go, oh, how many levels has my Pokemon gone up? It must be, like, ten at this point, right? Yeah! <laughs> one, one level! One level! That doesn't say anything. <laughs> I mean, I know it's been like two minutes, but still. Yeah, it's one, one step, one experience. I don't know the the rate of movement. I don't know, like, how many. If I go one, two... Uh, that actually felt like seven steps. Six or seven steps. I'm gonna see if other people have, like, strats on grinding as well. Good places to grind. Uh, people were gonna just say Victory Road. If you fight... End game. That's not what I'm looking for. Still, that's... I, I, I still... 15 to 30. Yeah, pre-Elite 4, this is hot gold, but... Same, uh... Grass below? Why can't you use both? Uh, I'm in the Ziffy part with both because you can't fly from Victory Road back to here. You have to go to the League and then use the one guy to teleport. And then I end up like, I can go here. Sorry, I can go back to uh, Newbark and then have to sail all the way back out to Victory Road. Uh, which I probably can do. I know, right? Yeah, it's... It's a bit iffy. People going, this is why I hate the RPG genre. I don't remember that many RPGs that do have this, but I do know a few that do. Final Fantasy 3 was a horrendous one I recently... Not recently, because it's been a few months now, but... Gen 2 is notorious for the level gaps. Yeah. This feels... Apparently trainer rematches was so much better in Hot Gold, so that actually benefits the thingy. Yeah, I don't remember. Like, I never remembered the... this happening... like, as much. 
As soon as you get to the Elite Four, they will rematch you every time you call them in their time periods. I don't know what's going on with that as well. Oh, there's one guy saying, change your 3DS clock. Yeah, I... You don't even need to go to Victory Road, one surf from side of town and fly in the corner. Uh, I'll... I'll... Fancy your, your theory, but I'm pretty sure... Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, sorry, I am in... I am in the new... place the moment I step on ground, aren't I? Maybe not even when I step on ground, like, maybe just there. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Scratch scratch my idea. Scratch my idea. You, you go three steps and you're there. Alright. Well, I guess I got to do both. It does mean, yeah, you have to use the teleport to go back, but that's fine. Jeez, I, I don't know why. I, I thought, like, you had to go the whole way. I didn't realize that, yeah, you're technically in cancer. Oh, my brain. My brain, I, I'm forgetting so much. I always say this is my favorite Pokemon, and it still is. <laughs> the grinding's a bit abhorrent, to be honest, right now, but... I don't remember it being this bad. I remember playing Crystal, like, a bit ago. Like, a year or two ago. And it's just like, it was pretty smooth? Does Crystal do something? Does Crystal give you... Crystal gives you, like, two grinds in one moment? I know, exactly. So every time I move back and forth, the people in the back of my party, the people in the daycare, gain, like, 10 experience. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I feel like Crystal doesn't have the grind because you have more options to take the gym at a lower level. Whereas in this game, you are limited by having, uh, like, not that many TMs that you can really access. That's, that is something surprising. Bro, I went from college and my brain works more than yours. If, you, if you're in college... You know, you, 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 may, you may feel like your brain's mushed, but it's always on edge. Once you leave college, and you start working, and you go, My brain is in mush mode. My brain has been in mush mode for like three years. It's crazy mush now. I got no brain. No brain left fine powder my brain. How do brains even work? Are they even real? Who knows? Another option someone's saying is, uh, I came 10 minutes ago, bro. Jiggy's gaining levels much quicker than Quagsire, though. That's a bit interesting. Is Quagsire a slow leveler? Is that the reason why he took his time gaining levels? I haven't looked up, like, the, um, the experience curves. What am I saying? Oh, he's medium fast. Yeah, that's a bit interesting. Okay. Oh well. Uh, but yeah, no, uh... So yeah, um, yeah, last time I was standing at this very spot, I was talking about, uh, I have no mouth and I uh, scream. Um, yeah, no, the, the game is pretty alright. I liked its atmosphere. I think that it's very, very dated in terms of its point-and-click adventure style. It's got too much, uh, to took the whole walk to home, yeah. Um... It's got too much, um, like, point and look for the object that I can't see or knew was there. Th things that you interact with are very often too ob or too hard to spot. Um, you have the benefit of when you hover over things that you can interact with, there's a little, like, oh, like, the verb that I'm doing with the thing that I'm hovering over. And it'll tell you that, rather than, you know, you're hovering over nothing. Um, but it does still have the problem of going... Uh, like in the the first 
Um, well, it's not the first guy, because you can do any of the people in the order, but, um, I forgot the, the guy's name. Starts with a G. It's like Gore's Noodle or something. I ain't getting wing attack today! You like how I never took, uh, Heracross back out of the box, by the way? Smart blender. Very smart blender. I'm just, it's, it's, it's mush brain. Chicky is male, but have female name. Chicky could be a mi male name. Chicky could be a male name. It could be short for, uh, Chick, Chicky Bert. Or, uh, Chicky Sfer. Not all chickies are female. Uh, the other, yeah, the other things of, um, I have no mouth that I thought were a little bit weird was the last part of the game, you you have your five characters and each of them have their own little scenarios that they're in, and uh, I, I really like those scenarios and how they're all about finding, well, the characters accepting a part of their past and a, a, a very kind of, not necessarily evil, but, uh, you know, a very repressed part of their, their past and then coming to terms with it and in doing so that defies what the AI expects. Um, but the ending's a bit weird, it's it's very open-ended, so a lot of things that you can do will result in different endings. But ultimately, I feel like I didn't really solve much of a puzzle in order to get, like, the endings that I really wanted. Uh, there's a lot of things out there, and then not a lot of them really link towards, uh, well, link at each other. Um, so, like, you, you enter that last area with a bunch of items in your inventory, and they're very abstract items, and you go, oh, okay, then... They're used- they're bound to be used in very abstract ways, like I give person thing and eventually just that'll work, sure. Uh, and literally I think one of the best, uh, endings, if not the best ending in the game, involves literally, uh, you have to start off with a certain character and do one thing which lets you talk to some person which then lets you just go, at your own leisure, walk to each, like, thing on the map, use one item on each of them, and then walk back and you win. And, and like, the guy tells you, you're just using this item, or using a certain item on every single, uh, you know, thingy. Or rather, no, they tell you to use only one on one, but then, yeah, by extension, just, just use, use one on every. And then that was it, that was, that was the ending. Uh, the puzzles in each of the sections were a bit harder. I feel like the, the very first person section was actually the hardest one. Some of the other ones were a little bit on the easy side. They didn't have as many items to deal with. They didn't have the fact that the, the guy gets a gun and then, like, you shoot the gun and, like, his ship blows up every single time. It's like, oh, okay, I can't experiment with a gun unless I save scum. But no, it was, it was pretty, it was a pretty fine game. I don't have too many, like, complaints with it. Uh, the, the, the atmosphere is really good. And that's something I feel like a lot of games, uh, like, fail to capture is that, like, strong feeling. That strong, in this game, it's a strong feeling of, like, hopelessness and, um, I guess, like, you know, the, the, the world means nothing to these people and yet they find meaning in it and despite not being that long a game it only took me about four and a half hours it's it does feel like there's a an arc that every character has to kind of traverse and doing that in that short of time pretty good stuff i'll say that so uh i definitely say give it a bit of a mild recommendation maybe have a walkthrough up just to cross refer to every so often because it's uh a bit too abstract. You'll, you'll, you'll just go like, okay, I'm at, I'm at this point and I realized that, oh, I had to, you know, talk to, I had to look at something and then just something activates somewhere else, like something exists. 
There's a bit of that. There's a bit of that going on. Oh, are you kidding me? You can't hit Razor Leaf? Tisk tisk. You know what's going to be the worst part of this stream? It's already, it's almost 9.30 now, which means that's almost half of my time spot. And, uh... Like, I think I can definitely get Chicky and, 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 uh, Herc up to level 40 in the next, like, half hour, but what about the other three, bro? What are they gonna do? I'm gonna take another stab at the Elite Four. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can actually do it, but... I'm still amazed how long it's taking to bring these... Pokemon back up to level, considering, like, I think I got up to here in like half an hour on the last stream, so that was what, like, six and a half hours, we'll just say, in general, to, to get up to that point, and now it's like, yep, it's been three hours so far, and it's continuing. Yeah, no, that's, that's a, that's a crazy setup. Anyways, I think that was it. I think those were the only two games I really played over the the past week. I've uh, I've uh, been working on uh, continuing more um, more Forza Motorsport Seven, which I know people. I, don't, I always feel like the um like realistic car games and and realistic in the sense of like it's an actual like circuit racer, um, kind of style game and not just like, oh, it's, it's like, you know, Need for Speed, where it's like, it's, it's very arcadey, but it does have real cars, it's like, no, I, 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 I like this idea of, like, circuit racers, and just like, you know, having a line and, and fighting your way forward through, um, through, uh, I guess, I was gonna say traffic, that's not how I play these games. My Pokemon Blue Onyx, when something I use special type move, I am weak physical unlimited power. Ah, uh, first gen, just like, the physical special divide is so, so big. Me, when I use Cloyster in that game, like, oh, I have unlimited power whenever I use Cloyster in that game. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, I, I'm just, yeah, continuing to enjoy playing Forza. It's, it's still... I got to this weird point where, like, uh, you're, you're working through the, the little cup championships and you're doing the, you know, you pick so many tournaments you want to do because after a while you will have enough points, uh, to have, you know, to unlock, uh, the next cup. And then you do that for, for the sixth cup and what it does is that it unlocks a couple of extra events in each of the, in each of the, you know, the tiers, uh, beforehand. In doing so, uh, it has revealed more than... It has revealed three endurance events. The first of which I noticed was uh, a 24 lap uh, route around the uh, the full Nurburgring circuit, the full 26 kilometers. I still think Blastoise is the best start for Gen 1. It probably is. It probably is. It, it gets, um, I know Bulbasaur gets like a pretty like easy going at the beginning, but I'm not too sure how it copes near the end, but like Blastoise is really solid. To be honest though, Bulbasaur does, or yeah, Bulbasaur does get to do Razor Leaf, so he does get to cheese the critical hit chance. Same thing with Charizard. Um, whereas like I don't think Blastoise has a, a high crit move. Because he is thick? Maybe. Yeah, no, yeah, so, so they, they, they give you this, this long, uh, off the top of my head, that's what, like, 620 kilometers? Like, that's pretty long. And then, uh, I see, uh, Le Mans, uh, was it 87? Hold on, let me, let me get the, let's give it a screenshot. 87 laps on Le Mans, 
Uh, Le Mans being a 13 and a half kilometer track, so that is bound to be uh, like over a thousand kilometers. And then, just the icing on the cake, Sebring International, 243 laps. It's a much shorter track at 5.95 kilometers, but it's still just like, oh boy, 243. This is all on the extra long setting. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to play on extra long, but even on the short and long ones. Uh, Cloyster got up to number three in GSU OU more recently. Pretty good. Dude, yeah, Cloyster is surprisingly, like, a real beastly Pokemon. It's, it's amazingly, like, like, understated in early gens. Or maybe, it, maybe it's not. Maybe the fact that it's in OU means it's not understated anymore. Uh, Want to hear a joke about last year? Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> I, I, at the very least, I try to, you know, have like an interesting topic and, and something to to talk about during this stream. So even if it's a, a bit of mildly um, repetitive background stuff, I, I'll, I, I'll try to make it a bit of an interesting stream to talk about some topics, have some have some laughs, have some gaffes, you know, the good stuff. The live watches came on the grind moment. Uh, maybe, maybe. I I know that my viewer count goes up like in the middle of my stream, and I don't know what time I'm necessarily hitting over there. But like my streams will start. It's like it'll be like two viewers for like half an hour at least. It's currently up to five. Uh, I know I've done like seven or nine, but like again, that's always been at the like near the end of the stream, and that's never been like near the beginning. So. Um, I'm not really too sure how to predict or really do anything with the, you know, the analytics on, on Twitch or on, on YouTube even. I just kind of play it because, you know, that's, that's what I'm playing right now. Dedicated a bit of time for me to chat. Cloyster got a special rap in Gen 1. Also pretty good. Ooh. Yeah, no, I, I used Cloyster on my, uh, my Gen 1 run on my YouTube channel. And that was, like, just the most amazing, like, member on my team. I think I, what else I use? I use Venusaur, I use uh, Jolteon, I use Snorlax, um, I had Dragonair, and I must have had one fire type, didn't I? Did I use Arcanine? I think I did actually. <laughs> I think I did. Can't use Arcanine right now, you gotta stick with Growlithe. There's no fire stones before the league. That's crazy. The worst part is that, yeah, if you could trade with someone, you can just easily cheese things. Like, you can go, oh, hey, friend, can you give me one of your few fire stones in the game? They'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll, they'll just trade you a Pokemon that's holding a fire stone, and there you go. First gen, you couldn't really trade with items, but... In this game, I don't know, the, the possibility of breaking the flow of the game is very easy. The Dragonite experience curve and level requirement make it pretty unviable uh, to reasonably get in play casual playthrough, yeah. I, I, I put all, that egg, all those eggs in that basket because I was expecting to reach level 55 at the very least uh, to get to the end of the game, but instead he ended up being my strongest Pokemon at level 46 when I ended, I'm pretty sure. And all my other Pokemon were in the, the low 40s, with like, uh, Cloyster being like 43 or something. And I thought I was really screwed, because like, yeah, like, Blue at the end of the game has a level 40, uh, sorry, level 65 Charizard. Like, that would absolutely sweep me, and speaking of absolutely sweep, I um, could get absolutely swept, but I'm gonna switch to Babat. Get a little bit of that shared experience in there, <laughs> and then I'll uh, switch out there. Uh, you can trade items with Gen 1 in Pokemon Say. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you can do... Is that uh, anything that would help in a run? That's something I'm curious about. I don't know if it necessarily would. Drinks OP. Fun fact, actually, I have never played any of either Pokemon Stadium. Um, 
Because I, I, most likely, I never owned a Nintendo 64, and I never actually had any friends owning a N Nintendo 64 growing up. Um, I probably, like, I'm probably, like, one of the older of any of my friends. And then, uh, like, I used to have a Game Boy, you know, I play this all the time, and then I had, like, a PlayStation very late into its lifespan. I think, like, 90, 1999, or 2000, maybe. And so I'm just, like, I'm just cashing up on the very end of the PlayStation library before the PlayStation 2 starts kicking in. And then, uh, yeah, I had a lot of friends jump in either on the PS2 or the Xbox. The amount of friends I... Sorry, sorry. The PS2 or the GameCube. The amount of friends I knew that had an Xbox, very low. That's a very, like, low amount of friends. I think I had, like, one who ever owned an Xbox. Um... It's weird, because, like, I'd play a game on the Xbox, and i go, wow, this looks really good, actually. Like, the Xbox versions usually did look really nice at just, you know, being at a higher resolution. Uh, they'd usually load quicker as well, I found, which is just something kind of surprising. Have you seen how many songs are in Project Gotham Racing 2? Like, jeez, that's a lot of songs. Like porcupine tree kind of, I don't know. So, uh, and then uh, yeah. I, what happened to I guess all the consoles that my friends got? It was either that or it was an Xbox 360. I don't know. I didn't really. Not many people bought PS3s in Australia from at least my pool of friends because the price was crazy. No one, no one really wanted to get a console for 700 bucks. Um, and also had a markup on the games, because games on the PS3, when they came out, originally, were 110 bucks. You can quote me on that one. That is crazy. Xbox games were 100. Wii games were 100. And on top of that, the Xbox was cheaper. The PlayStation, you didn't have to pay for a subscription initially, though. There were, for online, there was that. Xbox, you had to do that. And then, of course, the Wii barely had online, but... I was a god kid that got into an Xbox 360 really late into Gen 6 consoles, so I didn't uh, get to play with friends very much. Yeah, that's the other thing as well, is that, like, I... Like, being on, like, the PS2 generation, that really encouraged friends to come over, like... Um, because no one had online services set up for their consoles when the games had online services, even. I had a couple of games that did support it, but I just, I've never, you know, I've never divulged into getting network adapters for that. Uh, I regret not being able to play on the better servers the 360 had, but hey, I still don't like Halo that much. Yeah, I, like, they've got better servers? Or... I don't know how the server, like, bits of, uh, I guess the 360 work, because I was just thinking, like, oh, you just connect and then it's just whatever you're playing with. Although I do know that some people complain about, like, having peer-to-peer -peer connections in some games. Um, like, the, the online service just simply does, like, matchmaking and connecting, and not really, like, it's, it's not facilitating the, the main logic of the, you know, the game itself. Uh, 360 with Pirate PVZ GW. I assume that's Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Actually, I've never played Garden Warfare. I saw it, and then I was like, oh, like, I, I kind of dismissed it a bit, because I guess, like, I don't know, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to Plants vs. Zombies. Um... Yeah, no, I, I actually, I shouldn't have dismissed that game, like, when it came out. Um, I'll dismiss the sequel, I'm just like, eh, close sequels, what do you do, but... Yeah, I, I've never owned a, um, a non-Nintendo console since the, the Xbox and the PS2. I, I never got a PS3 or a 360, and I never got a PS4 or a Xbox One. I feel like the Xbox One is probably the most, like, mood console that, like of recent times because the amount of games that have been exclusive to it is just declining really hard. There, there's still a few here and there, but, like, uh, for me, as someone who, at that time, like, late into the Wii generation, oh, that goes my chair, uh, late into the Wii generation, I got, um, like, a graphics card for my computer. I, actually, I, rather, I got a, um, a bit of a DIY computer from a technician because, like, I don't trust myself to build it at that time. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, then I was like, oh, I'm playing all these cool games. Like, I, I think my computer, my PC at the time, it had a 9500 GT. I had that since, like, 20... Um, 2008. Like, it was a bit old. Um, and the 9500 GT is not that great a, a GPU. Like, nowadays, it's like the, you know, the NVIDIA XX50 whatever, so the 3050 right now, really does the job on a lot of games. There's definitely headroom, of course, but back then, the 9500 GT was something where it's like, yep, this card will, you know, it will get 20 FPS in the newest games. And it's just like, it's it's not, it's, it's not getting much better. So, that's something that we're a bit spoiled with as well. It's that, like, you know, the top-end cards are pushing so much higher resolutions and frame rates than the average person actually needs compared to how it used to be back then, so... The Xbox One X, and by extension the Series X if you can find one, I reckon are still the best media center devices ever made. Backwards Compat and Game Pass are too insane, and the PS4 can't play CDs. That's a, that's a crazy one for me as well, considering the PS3's, the fat ones, had the ability to, um, to play PS2 and PS1 games because it had a miniature PS2 uh, MIPS processor, or not even just processor, there were two bits in it. But it would, like, it would, you know, properly run PS2 games on, you know, a bit of a legacy system on the same disk drive that also ran Blu-rays. And you could play DVDs, Blu-rays, and the, I'm pretty sure you could play CDs on that PS3. And that was, like, the media hub at the time, especially because it, like, I did say it was 700 bucks, but it was also, like, yeah, audio tech giant Sony skipped on or cheaped out on the media license. I've got no idea why they did that. Not playing CDs is actually becoming lesser of a point because there's more music that's um uh well in some cases it's digital only there's a surprising amount of music that's only available um on a streaming service or uh it might like the distribution on cd is exclusively through like Bandcamp, so like you'd be buying it on the same site that you'd just be getting a digital version anyways um you can still do it i guess but is that um, or alternatively, you have vinyl also being as accessible because, um, that's just the thing. And also, blame all these artists for making albums longer than 80 minutes. So, I, I remember listening to the new Tool album from two years back, and it's just like, yep, it's longer on streaming services. I actually don't think it's any better of an album with the extra 10 minutes of stuff on it, but, uh... There's the new Kanye album, I think that's... I don't, I don't know, I haven't listened to it. But I'm pretty sure that one is streaming only for the moment. But yeah, it's uh... Still, I, I, I feel like, you know, you shouldn't cheap out, especially because I don't see any reason why the player can't play CDs on a hardware level. I think the capability is there, it's, did they write software such that it would read it as a CD and then try and play it in some audio player part of the operating system? Because uh, obviously that's going to be separate to all the rest of it. Um, and if anything, that's that's the fun part about the PS2, is that that, uh, that uh, DVD menu has a out-of-memory exploit. Well, not an out-of-memory exploit, a buffer overflow exploit. And that, that has allowed uh, the modding scene to go way crazier than than they could. I unfortunately still have a fat PS2, I can't do that. I'm really tempted, I'm actually, I'm really tempted to buy a, um, one, a retro tank, because I need a proper, like, HDMI upscaler. Um, I've got, like, a cheap crappy one, and it does okay, but it, it does have so much artifacting, not artifacting, um, distortion on it. Manufacturers need to purchase a license to run CD software. They physically can almost, uh, universally. Oh, I, okay, I hate, I actually, I really hate, and I, I know this is, like, a mildly controversial opinion because I feel like a lot of, like, you guys agree to it. Um, but, like, I hate the idea of, like, a form factor becoming the de facto. So, like, CDs became the de facto music format, and then whoever owned the CD license, whoever invented CDs, like, has to charge everyone to, like, well, at least to, to run CDs as a software. To print CDs, I think, is actually fine, but, like, CD software, it's like, ugh, 
bought a CD around a year ago from a band I really like, and it's the only CD I own. Yeah, last time I think I got a CD, I, um... I, oh, I can't remember what even it was. I think I bought, like, a couple of Genesis albums on CD, and then I was like, that's fine, but, like, I... I found it a bit hard to find the CDs I wanted, and I've got Spotify, and then by that point, it's just easier to listen to the albums on Spotify than to properly, you know, go on it. Remember the PS4 can't play CDs, and I still can't play it. Ah, uh, Like, that's, that's the worst part, is not being able to, yeah, still run the CDs. I'm, I'm probably in the same boat. I've got, I've, like, I bought a new case for my computer, and it's like, oh, it doesn't have any, you know, uh, five and a quarter expansion bays, so therefore no disk drive space. I've used this case since January, or February, I think. Uh, January. And then never needed a CD. Just, yeah, that's, that's... I could probably buy an actual CD player, but even then, yeah. Now, a PS... I assume the PS4 can play DVDs. Um, I assume that's still on the, the table, right? And yeah, embrace Gen 9 to... Uh, oh, the chat's strunken out. Uh, you said, my dad said we can buy a PS4 when PS5 came out. But here comes plot twist. It was the original PS4. Uh, you need to download an app from the software. Uh, oh, that's a bit weird. That is a bit weird. Um, buying, buying an original PS4 when the PS5 came out. Um, don't you s No, you use rest. I was, I was like, oh. Um. Yeah, it's... It's weird, because, like, the PS5 is still hard to find, isn't it? It's... And that's crazy, considering, like, it's not even, like... There's nothing exclusive game-wise about it. You're bound to still be able to play almost all the- well, the Miles Morales thing, I think, is separate. I don't know, there's something like that. Demon Souls, how about- we'll just say that. People- people who don't want to play the PS3 version of Demon Souls will play the PS5 version of Demon Souls, and all the PS4 players are in this weird middle ground where they either get to play a very last-gen version or not. Um, but, like, yeah, I legitimately, like, I've never seen a console go out of sale so quick. And buy PS5, go to Russia. Yeah, you could probably do that. Um, do I trust buying a PS5 from Russia? I don't know. But like, yeah, I don't know how it got sold out that quick. Apart from just like, you know, fear of missing out. Like people going, oh, like I, if I don't buy a PS5 now, many people are actually 4K HDMI 2.1 ready. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the other thing, though, is that the PS5 and, 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 by extension, a new console puts you in, like, the realm to support newer standards and newer formats. Um, so, yeah, people buying uh, a PS4 Pro or a, or a PS5 will have the ability to run games at 4K. And I think that is going to be a bit of a catch on people playing, like, regular PS4 versions. Um, I think the other thing, and this is... Uh, very accidental. Uh, Cyberpunk. Not just buy from Russian shop like DNS. Yeah, well, you could, but I, I just don't... I don't know any Russian sites to buy video game consoles, and I don't know if I'd necessarily trust them. Hey, Zendreko, how's it going? I'm gonna reset the chat, because I swear I fixed it as well. I was like, we too poor for this. Uh, I swear I fixed the chat, because I, um... Fix the, the the script running on this. Ensure it spammed it for like an hour, and then it still pushed down anyways. Here we go. Refresh cache. All the chat <laughs> names are gonna be different colors all of a sudden because that's how the Streamlabs chat works. Oh. Well. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's that. Also, a lot of it is how prevalent bots are. Yeah, that as well. That as well. There's. Like, I, I always, and, and here's my tinfoily kind of worldview, I feel like there's a lot of internet interactions, like, that are just not human at all. There's someone making a purchase, or 
writing a comment or whatever, and it's just like, they are not a real person. Or at the very least, uh, they're so desensitized to, you know, communicating over the internet that, like, are people even real? Since the last year or two, if it has perceived value, it's gone 15 minutes or less. Oh, exactly. And you know what's the worst part? Like, I, I have been a constant complainer of how GPU prices have gone up, and they were going down for a couple of months, and they're back up another 100 US dollars equivalent in China right now, which means, you know, that's not gonna last at all in, over here. And that's, that's crazy. I don't know if we're ever gonna reach a point where these cards are cheaper, because, like, give, give NVIDIA another year, they're probably gonna announce some more cards. What's gonna happen to, like, to those who can disappear again? What's gonna happen to the cards that people were just buying? Are they gonna, like, reappear? I don't think they are. I think people are just holding on to all these. Gen 9 console have the worst world start. Oh, definitely, definitely. Definitely. It's, I mean, I think the Switch was, like, the perfect, you know, like, setup for a game console, in the sense of, like, it's got, one, it's got the idea of the, the console separating itself, and also being a handheld, and that's just got intrinsic value. Um, maybe not nowadays in the, the age of, I can't leave my house without the government cracking down on me, but, uh, but, yeah, I, the utility of being able to bring a console wherever, um, and having just, like, it's the same game, and I can play it in a console and a handheld form, it's great. Um, but also just being out earlier to establish that player base, establish that user base, and best of all for Nintendo, establish the developer base, which is something they failed to do for quite a few years. A lot to do with the silicon shortage as manufacturers get better at using smaller die sizes, and COVID gets close to ending. It should get better, I did not play my Switch for too much. Oh, dude, my Switch is gathering so much dust, though, because I... Like, I'm playing way too many games on my PC. Um, just go into that Steam library and suddenly... Here's a bunch more games that suddenly appear in my Steam library. And I don't know what's going on, but sure. Uh, played not just on the train ride. Yeah, I used to play the Switch a few times, like, on train rides with my parents. Um, yeah. It's been a while since I've done it. Um, last time I think I really sat down to play a long game on my Switch was Dragon Quest XI. Which, I highly recommend, but it's also on the Xbox Game Pass. Um, so I mean, if you're a cheapo, play it on the Xbox Game Pass. Uh, the silicon shortage, yeah, that's definitely, like, the thing, is that the cost of getting these resources is, you know, just insanely higher recently. And, uh, like, like, I mean, it's, it's always been a, a cost increase over time, but especially now. Like, the demand exceeded the supply so hard that, like, it's just far shortage. We can't do anything about it. Um, the process gets better. Joy Boys, personally, my Switch suffers. Uh, if you mean... <laughs> wait, wait, the Joy Boys. So, what do you have done? I five hours trying to catch a crowd on the level. Yeah. I actually, I, I had a fun chat with my mum uh, about just, like, games she got me as a, as a child, and, like, I always, like, feel like a lot of people have those stories of, uh, they, um, they buy, or rather their parents buy a game for them, and it's always, uh, this, um, you know, like, a, a licensed game of some, like, other property, and almost all the time it's not a great game. And then I remember, oh, my mum got me, like, she got me Gran Turismo 2, and I had no idea what Gran Turismo was. And granted, she she went off it because my uncle was a fan of Gran Turismo. He, he didn't play many video games on his original PlayStation, and I don't think he even got any other consoles, but he absolutely loved Gran Turismo. Um, so that was that. And then on top of that, uh, she got me Rayman 2, out of nowhere. I don't know how... And, or, and Croc Legend of the Goblins. Croc is a bit more of a an underground, not as like amazing game. It's, it's definitely more of... Like, yeah, it's a, it's a fun platformer of its time. Like, I I always, like, thank my mom for having, like... And I guess, like, Pokemon. I didn't even know what Pokemon was at the time. Um, but there's bound to be, like, you know, there was a lot of games that my mom got, and I'm just like, dude, I really thank her for, for getting that kind of stuff. Um, 
hate the Joy-Cons, my Switch Surface. Yeah, I- the- the Joy-Cons... Like, I- I've had Drift in one, I've had one replaced. I actually- I sent both of them off just to be like, hey, like, if you see that this other one is working poorly, please tell me. And, uh, they sent it back on change, but they did replace the stick in the left one. Um... And, uh... Yeah, it absolutely sucks, and I didn't have a Joy-Con for a month. And that was during Animal Crossing time as well. So, like, that was when, like... You know, I'm not even using it much. Uh, spent my Master Ball on Rayquaza and then spent two days trying to catch Latias. Yeah, I... I'm always, like, I'm always so on the fence about using a Master Ball, because I know that if I throw enough Pokeballs at something, it'll inevitably catch, but... Um... Yeah, I'm in this kind of interesting spot where, like, I guess I could use Babat to take out the non-rock Pokemon, but... Unfortunately, half of them are rock. <laughs> and the other half, uh... Rhydon. Do I trust being able to take out Rhydon? Rayhorn, sorry. I actually might be able to. Oh, he knows rock throw. I think we're good, actually. Being faster than my opponent is actually, like, a saving grace now. Because now I don't have to worry about Golbat just, like, getting some cheap moves on me. Because I am the bat. Speed. I am speed. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely... I'll definitely say, like, you know, when, when all this, uh... COVID stuff goes away, like, I am 100% missing the return to normalcy and the return to, uh, you know, handhelds, like, being important, because I think that's something that a, a lot of, maybe not a lot of mobile game developers are experiencing, because, I don't know, a lot of people play games on phones, even, like, when they're at home the whole time, they don't play on console. I. I could never get into playing, like, a game on phones. Maybe it's just because it's cheaper, a lot of them have free versions that kids will get into. I still have to set up my Emerald for RNG abuse, and I really don't want to get around to actually get to it. Um... Oh, RNG abuse, like... You're not, like, cartridge tilting, are you? You're just, like, trying to figure out the, um... You know, like, secret ID numbers, and then trying to watch what's happening. I've really got to figure out how, like, a lot of these Pokemon games do their random elements, because, like, they do a remarkably good job at, like, it is deterministic in the sense that, like, you can use a, um, you know, like a TAS, and therefore you can recreate, or rather, you can, you can run input and get the same outcome, so therefore the game is deterministic in some way. I can't say speed normally because it sounds too much like HIV on Russian. Do they say HIV in Russian, like, oddly? I don't know why I just want to attack on that. Ah. He used the scary face, but I'm still fast, so... Gen 3, very simple. I haven't- I've, I've not actually investigated how, um... Yeah, how Gen 3 does its random stuff. Alright, here's something I want to know, because because now I've got at least three of them on level 40. I'm not really going to gain any... I've got to use the teleport, I forgot. Uh, I've got to at least pull the other two out of the daycare. RTC battery generates a seed, however many seconds, game runs at just under 60 FPS. To the golden rod. Uh, I'm gonna use the Pokemon Center now, while I'm at it. Ooh, that's a word. Speed. Oh, that's... okay. So, do people say they've caught the speed? 
Emerald's broken and doesn't do that uh, first thing in Leaf Green. Fire Red doesn't have a battery, so the seeds are linear. Ah! Just fastly. Oh, like, like frame count. Kind of, you know, numbers really high. Uh, let's put Chicky in the box for the moment, because I know I'm not going to do Chicky. And then I'm not withdrawing anyone, because I'm withdrawing two people from the box. From the daycare. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, it's, it's already... It's already 10.04. In Sydney time. Alright. Two levels? Two levels? Two levels. We got two levels out of it. One level. One singular level. Emerald does still have a, uh, generate a new seed when you hit new game, and the seed generation for that is also very fast. Ah. Uh. So every time you say how your crowbar is fast, I think about an incurable disease. <laughs> What's the beginning of, uh, cars in, in Russia? Because, because they got, um, Owen Wilson at the beginning going speed, I am speed. And the seed in Emerald is actually your, your, uh, trainer ID. Ah, that's the more you know. Do they, they still do the secret ID in, in Emerald as well, right? I hope they do. I hope they still do the secret ID. Alright, so yeah, so the plan now is while I've got three Pokemon at level 40, get Babad and fluff her up. Man, that's just disappointing that, like, they're not even, you know, they're not even that much higher level. I don't feel confident in taking them in, like, lower than level 40. That's. Just after the last time, that doesn't seem, you know, very good. Again, the generation is fast enough to not be reasonably manipulatable. Yeah, like, I mean, it, you, you gotta be frame perfect, I guess, in order to get, like, well, I was gonna say remotely close, but it's not even like, oh, I'm off by one frame, therefore things in the game will be close to what, you know, they're expected. It's like, no, like, you know, that's how C generation works. There's a massive number, and then things are added on by a massive number, hopefully. And then every single frame it goes to this. Uh, it's a reverse, actually. If you're not using a shiny, you've already caught. Ah. Not using a shiny as in... You don't do it with, like, the Spinder strat, do you? Because, like, doesn't Spinder only have, like, so many forms in... And it's based on... Is it based on your secret idea? Oh no, it's based on like its personality value or something, isn't it? Spin the strat was for breeding and that's... that's its all, but yeah. Oh, okay. Alright. When Game Freak start making the games with no Pokemon spawn glitches from mythical... Ah. Oh. Come on, Game Freak. Why do you make your games smoother? Except they don't. <laughs> Thanks, Sword and Shield. Appreciate it. That's kind of crazy that, like, I mean, I mean, one as well, I, I always find this amazing about Pokemon, is the fact that people, like, find out about this. I don't know if it's through disassembly, all glitches they can fix in this glitches about making Pokemon. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna fix the performance of Sword Shield, I don't care if it's, like, smooth as a baby's, a smooth as a baby's bottom on, on bug fixes. But you know what I mean, it's like... Like, the game just does not run, you know, as well as it definitely could. Uh, but even X and Y, too. 
You convert your decimal trainer ID to hex, run that hex through some handsome calculator and it spits out a list of what your secret ID could be. Oh, so the secret ID isn't even like an independent value. It's just... Pokemon Pro with a reasonable... Uh, like, you, you, you do a thing and then that can rule out a few secret IDs, like, um... Uh... Well, I, I'd imagine if this was like, you know, gold silver right now, then that secret ID would be based on, um, you know, the, the spawn location of the, the trees. You just RNG the starter, and when it shines, you got it. Ah, okay. Because, yeah, you can save your game uh, before, so you've got your, your turn ID and secret ID set. Okay. I guess also just like, yeah, I don't know how people even find out that the secret ID does exist. I guess unless people start doing, you know, memory viewing. Or, I, I guess the classic thing with Pokemon that people probably did from day one is save dumping. And they'd see a value and they'd go, oh, what's this value? And then they start seeing uh, that value just get read in certain ways. I don't know why I ran. Oh. I had a chat with um, someone today about a, uh, like... Just like some general like clone hero related things, and I do um, like some. Uh, it, it's nowhere near the same like level of reverse engineering, but it's like the principles are there. Where it's like you, you do as best you can to like try and understand what the game is, but ultimately you pretty much have to you know <laughs> uh, put put some bootstrap in there to run your things to access that game. So in, in my case, I've got like. Um, just like Unity, uh, like viewers uh, that people have made using Bepinex or something. And then, uh, you just like, you change a bit and you go like, okay, I changed a bit. What am I experiencing differently in my game? Um, because you can't tell what the, what the things you're actually accessing are. Um, and then you might cross reference the code and go, oh, like I'm seeing this is accessing that. I can start to extrapolate that. Oh, like maybe that's, you know, like the song loading or that's the scoring or something like that. My friend uh, made worse mistake in Pokemon Red Cop. She gave cut to Charmeleon. Big mistake. Never give yeah your good Pokemon any HMs beyond strength and surf. That's my rule of thumb. Only strength and surf. They're the only two. And even then, strength starts to wane in effectiveness in later generations of Pokemon. Like, it's, I think 4th gen. Does 4th gen give you a repeatable method of getting return? I think it does. Enough accuracy that Ruby Sapphire works normally with a good battery, but linearly like Emerald with a dead one, except the seed isn't different on a new game. How much guys from the stream uh, saw this task Pokemon Yellow Speed Run from 2018? I I don't know if I've seen the specific Yellow Speed Run, but I hope it's not like a like a like a legit speed run and not the I corrupted my save and now I can throw away so many of a certain item and <laughs> walk to um, Professor Oak when I leave the house, kind of save, or kind of test. Which, by the way, I've done in, in, in person. That was a, a, a fun one to flex on your friends. Um, I think my, my, uh, actual cartridge of, uh, of Yellow still does that. Um, just because no clock means that battery lasts much longer than it usually should. Well, not usually, but like, you know. Any, any game with a clock and its battery. He opened Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Yellow. Oh, they're doing the task bot kind of writing. I don't think you could open the entirety of Pokemon Gold because there's only so much memory and you can't write to the cartridge itself. Um, but you could definitely, like, or, or alternatively, actually, it could be, um, uh, like, input. As in, the player is inputting uh, so many, like, you know, so many button presses, like, m many more button presses a, a second than you probably could. And then, uh... And then they're effectively inputting the game as they go along. Because I remember seeing, um... Like, one of the, the Taskbot ones, and it showed the Twitch chat on screen. And it's like, obviously, the you know, the game isn't connected to the internet. It's just the Taskbot inputting things 
at so, so fast. Uh, the trainer ID, secret ID, and Ruby Sapphire are single frame apart, so oranging it and finding it is pretty easy. Oh, that's kind of neat. That's so neat that, like, those IDs aren't even, like, you know, that independent. That also does mean that, like, the number of possible combinations that you could have are, like, much lower. Uh, and then, yeah, catch shiny celebrate on right with daycare with one Pokeball using one new, and then change the game on the Game Boy to Tetris. Oh, dude, that's cool. I'm always amazed at, like, how people do that. Um, even if it's, like, really you're just kind of poking holes at the game to suddenly start, you know, basically buffer overflowing and just, like, writing, sending your input and then it gets written into memory and then you're just basically writing memory. I still think that there's a, a like, a big asterisk when it comes to, um, like, speedruns that are using... Uh, or, like, legitimate speedruns that are using arbitrary code execution. I think that's one thing, if it's like, oh, I, I broke the game. Like, a Pokemon Yellow speedrun where you do a save corruption. Um, it's actually, it's kind of interesting how consistently the game, like, breaks in that way as well. That's a fun one. Uh, played more Game Boy games, and then made Professor Oak sing Gladys song from Portal 1 with sprites. Oh, that's cool. Um... But, yeah, like, I, I guess, uh, I think the one controversial one, and I think I've talked about it in, like, a video when it was a thing, um, maybe, or maybe not, I don't know, but, uh, the, the classic one was, um, uh, I think Seth Blaine, uh, doing Super Mario World and doing this one thing where, uh, you have to, you know, move to the right spots and then you, you kick some Koopa shells in the, the right spots, and then uh, you're effectively inputting a little bit of logic into the game, or a little bit of, um, you know, something into the game's memory, such that when you reach a certain bit, it starts executing something that triggers the end credits of the game. And I think there's a certain degree of, should you be able, or like, is it a legitimate speedrun, if all you're doing is exploiting a bug in the game to, I guess, manually invoke an end game sequence based on memory. If it's like, if it's the game mechanics being very odd and just like you're able to, you know, to skip things like that. I guess that's, yeah, that's why you have categories. Um, and I haven't seen like, um, I actually, I really do appreciate sites like speedrun.com just like having these categories like really listed. Because I remember like, like, uh, at least way back in the day, um, like, games would either be, like, any percent, hundred percent, or zero percent sometimes. And there wouldn't really be, like, tons of, a uh, you know, nuance in between. Whereas, like, now, like, you got speedrun.com and, like, different games will define their own speedrun categories. It's great. It's, it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, I also do feel like, well, does that count as the any percent category, or does that count as the... You know, I, I would count that as like an arbitrary code execution uh, category. It's like, you know, no holds barred. Like, be able to invoke any arbitrary stuff you want. If it's the game, like, if you're able to move into a spot and let the game trigger you into something... <laughs> HIV must be been at all costs. It must, yes. Uh, like, yeah, if, if the game moves you into, like... You know, a part in the future or something, and you're like obviously cheating your way into into it. Well, I mean, like that's how the game works. Then sure, but yeah, if it's like, oh, I'm kicking things in very certain spots because I'm effectively writing to RAM, and then it's going to execute, and it will just like invoke the end of the game. I feel like that's the point. That's the point where I go, ah, uh, you shouldn't really be like overwriting RAM as much as just the game is poorly, I guess, like. You know, not poorly encapsulated. I don't know how to really phrase it. Uh... I just heard your game move you in time. It might move you in time. The time travel game, easy. But I, I, I think you know what I mean. It's like, if, if it involves specifically picking memory, so that you execute that memory, that's when I go, ugh. Cause, cause like, yeah, they're invoking scene transitions that would never, like, you would never be able to make a scene transition by doing that in any other way. Whereas like, if it's like, oh, I move to this part of the map, 
and then the game goes, oh, you're off the map, I will move you to where you should be, or something like that. Like a Mario 64, like, QPU aligning is something where it's like, yeah, you're absolutely abusing the mechanics of the game, but you are still working within the confines of the game's logic. Uh, there's a distinction in person execution, but yeah, as well. Like, there's, there's, I, I think tasks should be free reign because a task should be showing cool things. Like, we, we don't do tasks necessarily to compete on time all the time. So that's, that's one thing. Um, and yeah, at least we have categories. Uh, the Pokemon Yellow Zero Zero thing is fun. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and actually one thing I like about Pokemon is the fact that, like, there's a lot of categories that exist beyond the save glitch, because what the save glitch does is not let you experience any of the rest of the game. So, uh, by having the save glitch be, you know, it's a category where this is the one thing you do because you get to the end of the game. Uh, I don't know if it's really a fun category anymore, because it's kind of one where it's like, you know, it's too short as well. Gen 8, we need more sticks and leaves. Yeah, exactly. Um... And yeah, actually, that, that is one thing I, I love about, like, uh, some games is just, like, how how well can they keep the game together in terms of, like, are you, you know, exploiting the heck out of it? Actually, um, in, in trying to look up some fun things, I've been trying to, like, look into how uh, speedruns of uh, Rayman 2 work, and in that game, you're required to get so many lums throughout the game, which are, like, um, like, there's a thousand in the game, you'll collect a few in every level, um, and, uh, you are required to have 550 by the time you reach the fourth last level. Uh, there's a couple of other gates in the way, but that's a requirement that currently no one has worked around. There are a few requirements as you go along the way, but, uh, one thing that someone saw is that you're able to glitch your way outside of one level and... That's the one time it links to another level, and in doing so, you can skip half the game's levels. But you still inevitably have to collect so many lums for the uh, for the end of the the game kind of wall. So the speedrun saves you time in the sense you don't have to play levels, but it still like requires you to play a significant amount of the game in order to get the lums in the end. And that's a bit of an interesting one where it's like, yeah, that's that's a pass that, like, um, and even then, like, I've not seen anyone, like, arbitrarily load maps in that game. It's, it's, like, that is a, a transition that does exist. It's just that you're not supposed to be able to reach that transition, um, from that area. But that, one, that one's an interesting one, because it's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a skip that does exist, and it's also a skip that technically doesn't leak into its own category, because it isn't any percent skip, and you're still doing a significant part of the game regardless. I think maybe if there was a skip that did skip that Lum Gate, you might start seeing people go, oh, okay, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll go for a, a skip percent or something like that. Um, I, I, I think that there's a lot of... Uh, I guess a lot of restraint in a lot of speedrunning communities, so that's alright. I think there's also some... <laughs> I was gonna say some more negative things in general, like, without even, like, noting any particular community, so I, I feel like that's a... <laughs> that would be a bit of an odd call on my end. Um, it's, it's like a joke about a friend who walked in the game for the hundredth time and killed the final boss with a watermelon gravity bug. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of that. I feel like there's some games, um... Like, I can't play Quake 1 the same way anymore. I played Quake 1 on Nightmare difficulty, and even then, like, I knew, oh, like, I can skip some of these levels. Because it's just like, oh, like... Like in Episode 4, I just know too many skips at the end <laughs> So all those complex levels, it's like, oh, you can, you can easily shortcut your way past these levels. You don't have to properly know what you're doing in them. And it doesn't help Bethesda put barely any achievements in them as well. There's only two levels where you have to specifically do something in them. Oh well. Still, there's a, there's a lot of joy in speedrunning, and I'm glad that, like, as one of the internet's oldest, um, you know, forms of video game related video content, that's, that's an amazing one as well, the fact that one, Speed Demo's archive is still up, but also, like, 
sites way back when that supported video are just like, you know, absolute wild west. Now that we've got like, you know, standardized video formats, video players on, on web browsers, it's so much easier. But back then when like not everyone had things to record videos, not everyone had, uh, um, you know, like players for us, like you'd have all these embedded players, you'd have your Windows Media embedded player, you have your real player, your DivX, um, you'd have people just download a video file, uh, yeah, the chatbot came back, uh, the speedrun, the smallest percentage of execution in Zelda, where you need to wait eight hours to walk through the wall and even try, um, oh jeez. Uh, and then Skyrim and Oblivion, having achievements for skippable faction ranks makes me angry. I hate, I don't like, uh, like, having to, you know, choose, uh, you know, which achievements I'm getting this run. It, it's very annoying. I think there's some games, or some, like, things I see and they'll just recommend, just, like, save your game at this point, do a thing, and then come back for the other one. Um... I think I actually, I, I played like, um, yell at me on this one, I played one of the Neptunias and it's got like eight endings, and all the eight endings involve you grinding, uh, at the end of the game in a different way for an hour. <laughs> and it's just, oh, It's a very arbitrary way they set up the end game, to just like, you know, get to all these different endings. And it's like, uh, is there any reason why there's different endings like that? There's an achievement for every single one of them. And it's just like, oh, okay, sure. Stream in this moment, okay, and now we need to wait another eight hours, so... Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. Well, I mean, is that not exactly what I've been doing for the past two hours? I have been sitting in front of Victory Road going, yep, yep. That was one of the streams I did two gyms on. And now I'm just like, yep. Here is me, sitting here, fighting, fighting person. I will still say, it's a little disappointing that, uh, I've, like, I've felt the need to do this, like, significant grind. I'm almost, I'm getting close, but still. You literally have to watch eight hours as Link passes into the wall while sitting in the inventory. Oh, really? Eighty-two, wait, no, I counted eighty-three. Thanks, guys, appreciate, appreciate the counting. Golbats that know both Supersonic and Kuji's Ray. Death count. You count out how many Pokemon I, I fought today. 82 of them. That doesn't feel like that many, to be honest. It never ends, and it never ends. Even though Babad is almost level 37, and I think Fluff is just behind, right? Yeah, oh, 35, yeah. And then Hot Doggo is also 35. Just, just check the stats. That's a fresh level on Hot Doggo! That... That was content we needed Monday? Yeah, exactly. I'm always on the fence of, like, what to do in a... And, and this is a bit of meta stream discussion for the moment. I, I've always... When I, when I did my uh, run of Pokemon Blue, like ages back. I actually, I made it a strong point to not skip anything, to like keep the footage as like raw and authentic as possible because I didn't really like the idea of going, oh, and now I'm going to grind over here and you guys will just, you know, I'll be back and I'll be done with the grinding. Oh, there's that. Hear me? Let me fight one trainer. Oh, I need to continue grinding and there's that. Uh, Pokedoll the Marowak goes. Did I actually Pokedoll the Marowak goes? I don't think I did, but I think I did, like, definitely speak about it. I don't think there was a lot that I didn't talk about in, in that run. I did my best to, to search up things ahead of time. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I made it a, a big point to not really skip things, and I've kind of kept that going on with, with this. I've just been like, hey, you know, like, I, 
you know, this grinding is part of the game. Uh, I could still, hopefully, hopefully, uh, make an interesting stream, uh, despite the background game content not changing for two hours. Um, while stream is gonna end soon, clouds, uh, yeah, it, it's probably gonna end soonish. Um, I've hit two hours, but how about I'll go one more run, uh, before I use the Pokemon Center again, and then yeah, I'll call it a stream. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think, like, oh, we've had, like, a lot of good conversations. I've talked about, like, a few games I've played. I haven't really been looking at the game news recently. Um, we're in that kind of, like, slow part where it's like, yeah, there's some game releases here and there, but, like, I don't know how many people are really, like, going out. Something tells me Perfect Chaos is coming from Crimea in me. How strong is the rain gonna be? Like, that's... Where is the worst rain that I've ever had? I, I've, I've not left Australia much. I've only ever been like outside of Australia for maybe... Uh, it's probably been a while. I've probably been outside of Australia for like half a year of my life. Uh, is a meter three... Three meters of rain? Jeez, bro, that's a crazy amount of rain. In Russia to Sonic Adventure 1, what's going on here? Three meters of rain is crazy, cause I and and this blew my mind as well. I was like, why do they measure like rainfall in a length, as as in just like a one dimensional length? Um, I never really realized it for the longest time, but it's like, well, the rain falls on an area, and the and the rain gets captured in something uh, that measures its capacity. So the idea is that the wider the area that you have. You know, you take the division of them. Because if you're capturing a wider area, you're gonna get more rainfall, of course. So that's why they do just, like, a distance. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, how, how did that take me forever to figure that out? But, still, it's it's a bit of a weird one. Because it's like, we're measuring water in terms of, like, singular distance. Hope Sonic defeats perfect chaos. You know what I say to that? All's well that ends well. <laughs> That's the- that is the most hilarious, like, ending to a game. I- I can't believe that, like, whoever translated that, it- it all has to be lost in translation, right? That has to be the case. Sonic the Hedgehog cannot be, like, that, like, bizarrely tone deaf in Japanese, can it? Like, I- I hope that's just, like, the English. Um... And that's, that's one reason why I'd really love to, like, just, like, learn a secondary language and then just, like, play. People didn't have water for a month Crimea because, you know, uh, yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like, there's some games out there where it's like, they, um, uh, like, yeah, that, their meaning is completely different in a different language. I think one of the classics I always love is, uh, Dragon Quest because the Japanese plays it pretty, pretty straight. It's a, you know, a, a fantasy-style RPG. The English well, like, chuck in all these puns, and just, like, crazy, like, English accents transliterated. So, like, they'll put apostrophes and weird spellings in places to, to simulate these, these accents. And it's something that I don't think you could carry over in Japanese. You, you could not make, you know, this kind of writing in Japanese. So whoever, like, all those people who do the translation work for Dragon Quest, that is the, like, the best translations I've seen. And it's stuff that differs from the source material, but, um, Ukrainians are glad they're about to drown there, oh jeez. But yeah, you know what I mean, it's like, there's a certain degree of like, okay, like, you do have to dissect from the source material, but I also feel like, you know, it gives, in this case it gives it identity. I don't think that it's, it's the case for every game, that you should completely change the translation. But I think there's also a degree of like, oh, you can definitely play it too dry, and your translation is so flat. The water started to drown them. I don't think I've had like that horrendous rainfall ever near me, and I think it's probably because Australia. Australia's never been um, one for ridiculously heavy rainfall. It's definitely in places. I think like uh, near Brisbane definitely pops it very often. Um, here in Sydney, it's just like, eh, it rains sometimes. Sometimes it is, like, pretty strong, and sometimes we do get hail, but 
that's not, a. Uh... That's not forever, so. Don't worry, just gonna wait until ground is gonna take all the water, gonna take two months. Yeah, it doesn't really take that long to, I guess, yeah, flood water. Like, it's, it's either gonna drain somewhere or it evaporates eventually. Uh, let's do a... Let's switch out the hot doggo, just for a little bit of that loose experience. Why did I take the perfect chaos route? I could have gone the heavy rain route. Sean! Yeah, exactly. One day I will play heavy rain. It was on PC, so I now have no excuse to, to not have it. Do I use hot doggo since he's gotten flame wheel? Apart from the one attempt. At the, the league. Also, water can transform into ice, and we need to wait whole winter. Oh, true. Oh, that'd be crazy if it's like, you get a flood, and then the temperature drops just like, before the water's all gone, and suddenly you now have built up ice lakes. I know you can get snowed in, but... No, that's snow. I don't think it's as rough. Um, although definitely, you know, like, snow can be killer. It piles up, and people don't expect it to be as heavy as it is. Good evening, you're out late. Thanks for judging me, Pokemon Center Lady. Jeez. Well, that was a uh, eventful stream in terms of conversation. It was not as eventful when it came to the actual gameplay. Unfortunately, I am levels higher than when I started, and exclusively that. And maybe paid me a bit of money less. Here's a joke for me. Okay. Give me the joke. We have saved the game. It's all good. There's my Retroarch. Have a Retroarch. I've just instinctively gone for Retroarch. Uh, but yeah, with with that, I'm gonna end the stream, and hopefully that joke will come. The governor was sailing on a boat, and people could see that the rescuers were swimming around the city behind him. Oh my gosh. Well, with that, thank you all for watching the stream. Uh, got busted keeping a diary of his lead actress's childhood photos, and a personal 3D anatomically correct nude render. Oh my gosh. Jeez, bro. Crazy governor. Anyways, uh, yeah. Have, have a good one, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Lots of fun chat when I asked who it was. He said they always do this. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, anyways, have, have a, a great week, everyone. Uh, keep saying, keep well. Uh, keep up with the news or don't keep up with the news. That's up to you, I guess. But definitely play a lot of cool video games uh, or music or movies or read some books. Uh, stare at some pieces of art here and there. Uh, whatever keeps you happy, keep on doing it. Keep well. And uh... don't forget to like and subscribe. Like, oh, Do people do that? Do people still do that nowadays? I don't even know. Anyways, have a good one, everyone.